All right, guys, we got an oldie, but a goodie, Ruger P90. Let's have a look. Well, huh. take that. We are dealing with a single stack here. Not too shabby. Not too bad. All right, one more Mac here. Completely acceptable accuracy. Guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing a little gun review for you here. This is a Ruger P90. Uh, some of you folks may or may not be familiar with the P series uh, from Ruger, but it's a series that goes back to 1985. Uh, they came out with a gun called the Ruger P85. And the P series introduced a lot of really, really interesting and unique design elements into a pistol that, as far as I know, either hadn't really been done before on the scale that they did it, or hadn't even really been done in this way at all. But the pistol utilizes uh, investment castings to make a really affordable uh, type of handgun that Ruger could offer for a very fair amount of money. Uh, these guns had a lot of favor with a lot of folks wanting a, a, a well-made, uh, but thanks, Chad, uh, but but good you know handgun for the money. Um, the investment castings you have a steel slide that's investment cast, and then they surface grind the, the slide uh, to give it uh, you know that kind of smooth. Uh, texture right there. So that's why th they look rough and kind of what, what we say in the white or rough in all the other areas is because that's exactly how it comes out of, out of the casting machine. Uh, the slide stop, a lot of the internal components also investment cast. Uh, that makes it very inexpensive to make. Uh, you have an investment cast alloy frame. It does use a stainless steel barrel, which is nice. Um, they're really cool guns and the reason that I wanted to do a particular video on this one is because uh, they are available on the used market for a very reasonable amount of money. And to me, they represent a very, very good value. And not to mention, I would say, uh, I, I dare say, I'd use the word collectible to some degree. Uh, some of these guns in really, really good shape can be uh, collectible units. Uh, some of you might be into collecting, you know, older uh, autos. I know I'm a big fan of the Smith & Wesson Model 59, like the old school Model 59s. And there's a ton of spinoffs that Smith & Wesson made of the Model 59s. And this gun's uh, pretty much the same way. You know, they came out with the P85, and then they had some other models like the P89, the P90. I think they did a, a, a P94, P95, and so on and so forth. So lots of those, uh, and I think they might have even done like a P96. If I remember correctly, I want to say that gun was like a, a DAO 40. You know, they were getting into some of that type of territory. Um, but there were some revisions to this basic uh, P series of guns over the years, and they did them in nine. Uh, 45, 40 cal. I don't think they did any 357 SIGs. I'd have to look back on that. Um, but they were just meant to be a robust and reliable handgun that could be had for a reasonable amount of money. And they're actually pretty accurate. I'm, I'm not shooting it too terrible, but for the money, they're great. You can pick these things up for under $300 all day long. And they just represent a, a wonderful value on the used market. Sadly, Ruger does not make this gun anymore. Um, the P series was replaced by the SR series. So you guys are probably familiar with like the Ruger SR9 and all the other random SR guns that Ruger has. Now, I've never really been able to, to determine this like definitively, but my theory is that they make more money on the SR series guns. It's not that they don't make money making the P series gun, but I think that one, by the time they looked at like the overall cost to make the P series gun, they determined that, well, hey, we can make more units of the SR series 
and make more money on them. So I, I literally think that it was just a money-making thing. I don't really want people to think that just because, oh, well, Ruger dropped the P-Series, it must obviously not be a good gun. That is not true at all. The P-Series, I'm telling you, is probably one of the best guns that Ruger ever made. Like it, The entire P-Series as a whole, in my opinion, are some of the best guns, especially in the auto-loading category that Ruger ever made. I would really take a P-Series gun over an SR any day. Uh, that's just my opinion because the thing is, here's a way to look at it. You know, I know Ruger came out with their American series and the American series is a great gun and they're trying to kind of follow the lineage of the P-Series and offering a gun that can be had for a very reasonable amount of money. For those of you that don't want to buy a Glock or something, you want something that's a little bit more affordable, the American gives you the ability um, to get into a striker fire handgun without spending a ton of money. And for some of you, obviously, like the weight and size of this gun, it is a little bit bulky because of the use of castings. It does have a considerable amount of bulk, especially for a single stack. I mean, guys, this is a single stack 45. It doesn't take standard 1911 magazines. So it does take a proprietary magazine. So there are a lot of things that Ruger as a company specifically has done to try to, to, to kind of alleviate that issue and trying to, to get with the program a bit. So I'm not taking a, you know, a bad opinion on the SRs or the Americans or any of the newer guns that Ruger has out. I'm just merely stating the fact that I, I, I think these guns are exceptionally well made and they sometimes get a bad rap for no reason and people just haven't really shot them and understood that they actually are a pretty good gun. Now getting back to this particular pistol, uh, this one is an alloy frame, but some of the later models also uh, utilize polymer frames. That is one thing that they did get into on some of the uh, Rugers. I believe the P95s are, are, are polymer, uh, so they did eventually get into extensive use of polymers. But I think the metal frame guns are kind of neat. We're going to shoot it a little bit more. And one thing I will say is the slide and all the controls on this gun are made out of carbon steel. And if you don't keep it oiled and, and well wiped down, it will rust a lot easier. So that is one thing is the uh, corrosion resistance on this particular gun. Definitely not as good as some of the more modern uh, offerings from Ruger, obviously. But we'll give it a mulligan. Okay, let's have a little fun here. Uh-oh, I hit an innocent bystander back there. Not bad, I mean, at, at combat distances, you're gonna be able to take care, of the, take care of the problem with this thing. Well, if I could refrain from pulling a couple of shots there, that group, for the most part, is about the size of the bottom of a Coke can at about 15 yards. I would say that's definitely acceptable. Uh, the ammunition that I'm running in this particular video is some Freedom Munitions, uh, 230 grain ball ammo. Seems to be doing the job okay. Let's take out a couple of sodas. Or try. <laughs> that one was trying to get away. It was trying to get away, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, this, uh, we're going to get Chad in on this gun here in a moment. Uh, this particular pistol I actually picked up for Chad. Uh, he likes some of the kind of older autos and things like that, and I figured this would be something that would be cool for him, and uh, he doesn't have enough 45s, so I had to correct him of his ways there. All right. You know, th this honestly would be a really good entry-level 45 for somebody. Like, maybe you don't know if you're a 45 guy or not. For under $300, this thing's great. Tell you what, since I decocked it, let's try the double action. Um, it is a double single action pistol. Uh, Ruger also made not only this gun, but many of the other P-Series guns in a decocking only uh, fashion as well. So basically it's just single action only. So they did make kind of a single action only version of this gun, and I think they did do some DAOs as well. They experimented with that. Uh, but the double single action with the decocking mechanism and the manual safety is pretty much the most common version of the P-Series gun that you're probably going to see out there. All right, double action soda.
All right, double action. Got that soda right down there. Oh, no, you don't. Double action is definitely a little bit on the heavy side. Let's take our time here. Let's try a double action on this plate here. See where we're at. I'm just going to aim at the bottom. Yeah, it's easy to really pull this thing around in double action. You got to really think about it, just like, a, I guess, a wheel gun. All right, one more soda. Let's try it out here. Not bad. All right, I'm going to finish these three mags up. Let's take a couple of long range shots out to 30 and 75 yards. Just have a little fun here. Not too bad. <laughs> I can't count, guys. All right. The thing hasn't skipped a beat, has it? Not those, too last shabby. Two, those last two went right under it. Oh, a little low, huh? Yeah, you can see that tray is pretty good. Cool. Way low. Just over the top. That's eluding me. Now you'd scare them away at that distance. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Well, you know, I don't think I'd really be trying to shoot somebody at 75 yards with a carry gun, but it's still fun to try. Um, but anyway, I'm going to let Chad have a go on it. Uh, this particular gun, again, the, the main thing I really want to drive home in this video is it's a good value, okay? Not every gun review has to be about something new or crazy or space age, although that is fun. Uh, we try to also kind of check out guns that we feel uh, kind of work out well in the way of being a value-minded and, and really just adding that value to your everyday life. I mean, some people don't want to spend a ton of money. Maybe you don't know if you're going to be a 45 guy or not. This is a great way to get your feet wet uh, in the 45 world without spending a ton of change, and you're still getting a very, very nice handgun for the money. Uh, so that's just something to consider. Uh, I'm sure Chad can do better than uh, I did in this run, but let's let him have a go here. All right, guys, I'm going to take a few shots with a little Ruger P90 here. This was a... Uh, Nice little surprise. We were looking at this at Moss the other day, and I was thinking, man, that's a really cool gun, and yakety yak, and then all of a sudden Eric has it with him. He's like, yeah, this is yours. Like, all right. I'm going to take a few shots with it here. I just, uh, I don't know what it is, but I've always liked these old school Rugers, like the old like, Mark IIs and stuff with the Zytel uh, lowers and frames and such. Just that kind of old school looking Zytel rubber grip, you know, it's just neat. I don't know what it is about them, but this is a solid gun for the money. I mean, 300 bucks. It's, it's hard to find anything that's 300 bucks that has this much stopping power and is a nice high quality gun, even though being a little bit older. So enough talking, let's do some shooting. All right. Hopefully better than I did. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Uh-oh, a little low. Yeah, not terrible. It's got a really interesting recoil impulse to it. Um, it's just kind of like, <laughs> it's not like, I don't know. It's, I'd say it's probably similar to like a 1911 because it does have a, a barrel link, you know, system in it. But recoil impulse is really nice. And it's a chunky gun, a little bit of heft to it. So definitely soaks up some of that recoil. Mag fairy. Mag fairy. Ooh, yeah. All right, let's see. Let's check out our bogeys. Too, too, Take out a little six inch popper back there, maybe. Uh, a little low. I think I do better when I don't think about it and I just pull the trigger. <laughs> so far, this thing, like you said, man, it hasn't skipped a beat. Not a single malfunction.
Not exactly a match grade gun. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep running some rounds through and see what we can do here. Definitely a long trigger pull. Maybe I'm I'm not gonna do it better than Eric because I'm not taking my time. All right, let's see. <laughs> Woosa. Dang, man. I keep pulling this thing to the left. Yeah, doing it to me too. All right. All right, I think I got my mojo on now. Let's see what we got here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I lied. <laughs> Ruger P90 meltdown. Commencing. It works. It does work. Man, it works good. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> blowing the top of that watermelon off. You're giving him a, mo a reverse mohawk. A reverse mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that 45 ball, man, it takes no prisoners. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's punching some holes in there. Eric's over here loading mags as fast as his little fingers can. Like, slow down. All right, let me take my time and see if I can take out some soda pops. All right. Well, all right. <laughs> it's more reliable than my new SIG 220. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> this thing, it definitely, it, it's a little bit large in at least my hand personally. Um, you know, not having not having shot one of these ever before, and just kind of being interested in them, it is a a chunky pistol. And it's hard to get a good, just solid grip on. And I don't know the trigger, it's it's okay for what it is, but definitely not like a, a match grade gun or anything like that. But that's not what its intended purpose is. It's reliable. So definitely, it's reliable. All right, let's see. Well, that hit way to the left. What am I doing here? There we go. Well, all right, so, <laughs> so our soda landed down on our new watermelon patch. We shoot so many watermelons out here. The uh, patch is starting to grow up under our target stand down here. Let's see if we can hit him in the little watermelon patch there. Oh, yeah. Just to the left. Man, it really, really does take a fine fine feeling to get this thing really dialed in. All I right. think the most important thing is reliable and cheap. Good. All right, Good so shooting. I switched from looking at the front sight to just looking at the dang target and squeezing the trigger and I mean, hey, go go for a go for a little speed. A little speed there. On this D28 to the right here, like wrap them out as fast as you can. All right. And keep see. them on target. Well, that's if that long trigger pull is not good for that for sure, but I mean, let's try see. again. Dude, you're done. Not out of ammo here. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> guys, I hope you can tell we're just having fun in this video. I mean, if they don't make this gun anymore, you can find one used, buy it. Probably more rounds wow. than have ever been put through one of these guns. <laughs> right it is a meltdown. All right, let me let me take some long range shots here. All right, let me at least attempt to. One spare round. One spare <laughs> that's round. That's all I have left. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's it. Rest your ammo. Dang, dude. Right on the bottom. That one hit the protection plate. All right, so that's like 35 yards and 40 or uh, 75. Well, Granted, she is fun. getting warm. <laughs> She's getting warm. Good grief. I'll take a few shots at 75. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to. All right, so 
<laughs> I'm gonna top my go. mag off and have seven Empty plus mag. one. What a fun shooting gun. God, man. All right, so first shot double action at 75 yards. I know I'm gonna miss. <laughs> oh, God. Thing is smoking. Oh, check that out. All right, this is gonna be like that SIG P226 that we did where I shot the gun better double action only than I did single action. What is going on here? The thing is a bullet hose. Dude, it has not skipped a beat. Good shot. Double action only, all right, let's try it again. Maybe you get, need to get a DAO model. <laughs> What is going on? Now you got to do it upside down. <laughs> I don't know about all that now. <laughs> all right, so single action. I, I'm not going to hit it. Oh, I did hit it. Okay. <laughs> what is up with that? I shoot double action guns better than I do single. Oh, whatever. What do you think? I love it. I really do. I've just always... I've just always really liked these classic uh, auto loaders, not only from Ruger, but like the old Smith and Wesson 59s and such. Um, both the, the P series and like the model 59s are some that I don't have in the collection until now. Um, so I'm definitely gonna be on the lookout for like some of the older like 85s and 89s, uh, just because they are neat kind of collectible guns and they're just a neat piece of Ruger's history if you're a Ruger fan at all. But uh, like Eric said, this gun does represent an, uh, an awesome value you know, for an auto loading, uh, you know, firearm that you can basically find for well under, you know, $350 in a lot of cases on the used market. And, you know, even given that the, the slide and everything is investment cast and the frames investment cast, don't let that dishearten you from, you know, thinking the gun that, or thinking that the gun is poor quality because it's not. If I had the choice between something like this on the shelf and I dare say a high point for a couple hundred bucks, I think I'd spend the extra hundred dollars on you know, this nice single stack P90 here. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, <laughs> a little bit of our crazy antics and such. But this is what we do at the range. We just bring you guys along for the ride. So stay tuned. We got a lot more on the way. Take care.